Hey everybody, welcome to Cut Transform Glue and now it is finally time to add some weapons to this combat robot. And I have this laser cut shape right here which seems perfect for a missile pod. And so I 3D printed a couple of these pieces right here which will make the basic shape, the basic body of the missile pod. And I'm gluing them together using the weld bond glue which works amazing with the PLA. Now as you can see I've left this hole in the body and that's so I can add this black ribbon right here which I'll also glue to the body using the weld bond glue. This kind of weld bone glue right here is super fluid and the good thing about that is that I can first position the pieces together and then I apply the super fluid liquid and it kind of finds its way in between the pieces in a different process from the CA glue. Now of course there's a downside to that and that is that this uh, kind of weld bone glue right here only works with certain types of plastic, mainly acrylic and ABS and of course it won't work with wood or any anything like that. Now back to the model, as you can see I've added tons of details to the surface of the box including this one right here which will be the, the vents of the missile pod. The idea is that the fumes from the shooting of the missiles will come from the back using these vents right here. And as you can see in this particular piece I've been using a ton of laser cut acrylic pieces, some laptop keys and some other different types of griblies. Now on this side right here I'm using yet another 3D printed piece but this one actually is something that I made for my shop to organize some cables and I'm kind of trying to create a distance from the missile pod to the body of the robot. There's also this button right here from a dead printer and I'll use this to swivel the missile pod. And on the holes on the front where the, the missiles come out of, I'm adding some tiny plastic uh, discs just to add some detail to the hole right there and make it look more interesting. Now I'm pretty happy with the amount of detail that I have on the missile pod but I actually need to create some distance from the body of the robot just so it can swivel and maybe go up and down. And so I decided to create some arms, some support arms that go in between the robot and the missile pod. To quickly build that structure some laser cut acrylic is the best choice as I can use the weld bone glue to position the pieces together and it is set in only a couple of seconds. I really liked the result and now I just have to drill some holes on the sides of the robot. Then I threw a coat of primer on the pieces and I was very happy with what I was seeing. Now of course it only makes sense to, to make two of these missile pods and so a quick magic will do the job. Now I'm currently working on digitalizing these two missile pods and so yeah I'll make them available for my patrons on the combat robot tier soon. Now I don't know if you noticed but this robot is still missing some feet so let's solve that problem. This piece right here seems like a good shape for the feet and so around it I 3D modeled and printed this piece right here. As I often do in my projects I've left a space right here just so I can fit an M4 nut and that's going to be very useful on the diorama face so I can securely attach the robot to the base. The gribbly fits perfectly inside that piece and I just have to glue it with some CA. Some baking soda was added to make that bone stronger and also to fill the gap in between the two pieces. Now as you can see I've left some empty spots on the model and that's just so I can fit some random griblies later like these uh, white uh, plastic rollers right here from some dead printers. I'm not entirely sure what this does or the function of it but it certainly looks cool. Now as I also often do in my projects I begin with a gribbly which I feel looks amazing and later I decide to cover it with some laser cut acrylic. And that's exactly what I did right here, I decided to cover the, the grey gribbly with some cool shapes I had in my collection on the top of it. I know this probably doesn't make much sense but yeah if it looks better I'll go for it. 
In my collection of leftover 3D printed pieces, I found this yellow ball joint right here from an older project. And I just had to make some adjustments to it to, to fit it on the gray piece. And I'll glue it on the top of the acrylic using the CA glue. Now CA glue was the choice right here as it didn't have too much surface area. And so I would need to, to reinforce the whole thing with some baking soda. Now the piece that supports that attaches the feet with the ball joint of course is a custom made 3D printed piece just because it is much quicker and much more precise. Now both pieces were attached together using some CA and on the top of it I've added some details like some laser cut acrylic and some other gribbles. It sits kind of loose as it is, but the coats of primer and paint will make the whole thing tighter uh, later on the project. I then found these two very interesting looking grilleries right here, and I decided to combine them together to, to add some detail to the side of the ankle piece. There's an acrylic disc right there where the grip is attached to it using some pressure fit. But at some points I really need to use some M4 bolts and nuts to make the whole project more stable and sturdy. I've been using some M4 bolts and nuts in my projects for a long time and so I've developed a system. I keep a collection of different lengths of M4 bolts and alongside it I keep some pieces where I can hide the nuts and the heads of the screws uh, that are 3D printed just to make things faster. But yeah, now my combat robot can finally stand up on its own and I really like the legs and feet geometry, the poses I can make with it. But now let's talk about the primary weapon of this combat unit and it is this uh, big energy weapon right here which I wanted to add to the side of the robot. Uh, this one ended up being a major failure but I'll explain to you guys why uh, later on the video. As this was just a placeholder, uh, I began taking everything apart as it was glued uh, back in the day using just some hot glue. And of course around it I made some custom 3D printer pieces just to begin uh, putting the volumes together. I messed up with my measurements and so yeah, I had to make some changes to the shape of the biggest scribbly using my mini disc center and I was good to, to keep going. Now one of the reasons I failed in this energy weapon was the, the LEDs. My idea from this point on was to make like a double barrel energy weapon right here on the front and so I decided to use some LEDs I had in my collection like this one right here. This big bright red LEDs uh, right here and I decided to actually use a couple on this project so I made this custom 3d printed piece right here where I could fit it uh, like perfectly and I was very happy with the amount of, uh, of light I had it looks amazing at this point but eventually everything started to go south uh, one of the LEDs stopped working out of nowhere and so I had to make a second uh, piece adapter for the LED so I can use like a single one as I had no backups, no backup LEDs in my collection. And the whole idea from the LED in this project and the double barrel is that I would have to use like some fiber optics to, to kind of guide the light on the tip of each barrel. And so to, to achieve that, I made some hollow pieces like this green one right here, which on the top I've added some tiny details and some laptop keys. And I felt it looked amazing. I really liked how the design was coming together. And I even went online and I ordered some cheap decorative uh, fiber optic lamps uh, to go in this project. And I kept the whole way from the barrels to, to the body of of the energy weapon like a, a channel where I could like put the fiber optics uh, through I coated the whole thing on primer and I was very happy with the design with the with the looks of the thing but when I was trying to find a solution for the energy for the AA batteries for this project I found this uh, box right here which I felt I could use on the body of the robot keeping the the batteries outside of the weapon I burned the 
best LED I had in my collection. Yeah, this goes just to show how bad I am with electronics, but I kept going. I bought this cheap laser pointer right here, which has like three different light sources. I made some changes to the pieces I made for the LED idea, and I kind of managed to, to, to adapt the whole thing for this new uh, light source for the laser pointer, and everything was looking good. As you can see, I could fit the laser pointer right here, and the only thing I would have to do uh, to, to adapt the whole thing for this idea with the fiber optics was to create like a cap uh, for the back of the whole thing just so I could like cover uh, the laser pointer but still be able to kind of open it and replace uh, the batteries if needed in the future. Now as you can see the laser pointer is slightly bigger than what I would want for the, the energy weapon it is kind of too big at this point and so I quickly made this cap right here for the back of the energy gun and it fits perfectly on the weapon no problem just a pressure fit and the laser pointer is hidden right there in the back now here's the problem and here's the failure and creators can kind of relate to this feeling I spent so much time working on this weapon solution that I'm not really sure anymore this is the best design I could come up with. But I'll have to deal with this later on the next video. Let me thank my patrons for the amazing support and of course let me thank you for watching this far in the video. Talk to you guys in the next one.